Hi, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd, and it is time for our weekly track roundup where I go over what I felt were the best and the worst tracks of the week. You guys know what it is. All the songs that I talk about are linked down below, so you can check them out for yourselves. And also linked down below is a link to our sponsor, the Ridge, the good people over at The Ridge, they make these nifty metal plated minimalist wallets that fit nicely in your front pocket money clip on the back, holds all your cards right nicely and neatly in the middle. They're sandwiched in there like a giant card Oreo. Um, love mine. Been rocking it for a long time now. And uh, the, the Ridge continues to support the segment. So hit up that link. Use promo code MELON to get 10% off your order if, if you're interested in such a wallet. All right, also down there, Amazon associate link, Turntable Lab associate link. It gets some uh, colorful pressings of some vinyl we've covered on the channel. We get kickback from it, supports the segment, supports the show. And let's get into the worst tracks of the week, the worst ones, the ones that I thought were the worst. We have a couple. Let's go. First one. Ugh, new Tegan and Sarah. New Tegan and Sarah. They just cannot seem to drop a decent single. This new one is, hey, I'm just like you. And it, aesthetically, I thought I was going to like it a lot more than the last one because it has a bit of a synth pop, power pop type of feel, some uh, lightly rowdy guitars. It's got, it's got a little bit of an attitude to it. It's got a bit of an attitude to it. But the more that I listened to it, the more I realized I really do not care for the tune of this song at all, nor do I care for the lyrics all that much either. So while I do like um, the instrumental palette the duo are bringing to the table, I'm not really digging on uh, this uh, this new song, sadly. Uh, moving on from there, Korn has a new pretty bad track. Not really much standing out to me about this song at all. It's like Korn gets blander and blander with each new song. But um, one thing that did seem weird to me about this track, very weird to me about this track, is that the very thick, sludgy, uh, guitar riffs on this one sounded like something off of an old Torch record, Torche, Torch record. It was like something off of Harmonicraft or even their previous album. I have no idea how this specific sound is landing on a Korn record, but yeah, it, it pretty much just sounds like that. They just pretty much sound like a cut-rate sludge metal band uh, during the more riffy and instrumental bits of the song for some reason. And uh, moving on from there, we have a new uh, uh, Camillo uh, Cabello, uh, Cabello track, Liar. And um, thought this one was a little odd in that uh, there were numerous parts of the song and the hook as well. I mean, it's it's nearly an interpolation. I imagine the similarities here are intentional, but it just pretty much sounds like a really bad Ace of Bass ripoff. Oh, then you want is another baby. It's, um, it's, it's quite distracting. It's quite bad. I have no idea um, why pop artists and, and labels continue to do these songs that are just like blatant ripoffs of old hits. It's pretty much the pop equivalent of like a movie reboot. We're going to take uh, some very clear trademark instrumental bits and like a bit of the vocals, a bit of the flow of the original song and just like try to slightly like little itty bitty retool it just a smidge uh, to make it just another pop song that we also hope ends up being a hit. And uh, yeah, it just ends up sounding very cheap and trashy. Uh, let's go to the tracks that I thought were kind of meh. Let's go to the ones I thought were okay. Not blown me away, but certainly worth uh, pointing out and uh, shouting out. One, a uh, new track from Spoon. It's a B-side. It's got a raunchy rock and roll, almost bluesy type of feel to it. Shake it off. It's, uh, it's not bad. Give it a try. Uh, also, Metronomy, Wedding Bells. I uh, thought this one was a little underwhelming, but still some sweet synth pop with a new wavy vibe to it. But of course, being Metronomy, there's there's always uh, uh, some modern vibes going on in their music, no matter how throwback it is. And uh, we also have the new M83 song. This uh, new one over here, titled Temple of Sorrow, uh, sees the project going into an oddly lengthy a uh, prog synth direction. I'm not sure if the old fans or even any new fans are really going to take to what's going on here. It just seems like way too out there. And and honestly, in the grander scheme of things, when it comes to this particular style of like 
very 70s, again, very progressive synth odyssey uh, type of track. This isn't even like one of the best I've ever heard. This isn't even really all out there um, as, as far as the, the gold standards of, of this style of music go. So uh, for somebody like me who, who likes some Tangerine Dream, for example, uh, this is quite drab. So, um, you know, I, I appreciate that he tried. I do think there are some cool uh, progressions to the track, and I think it comes to a pretty neat climactic finish. But if if this is if this is the new style, it's uh it's it's got to get better than this. It's got to get better than this. Uh, we also have this new collaborative cut from none other than Injury Reserve, featuring Code Orange and JPEG Mafia. <coughs> Excuse me. I imagine Code Orange most likely had a hand in the instrumental here. Um, I can't quite tell where exactly they fit in, but I do think it is pretty neat that they had some kind of impact on this track. Injury Reserve seems to bring um, a, a, a lot of indescribable, um, uh, absurd, almost nonsensical bits during the first portion of the track. Something I would have to read into a bit more, but it just seems like a little bit too all over the place to grasp anything out of it um, on a first couple of impressions of the song. Uh, however, I still, again, I do like the instrumental vibe of the track, and the JPEG Mafia feature on the back end is amazing. Like, easily one of his best features, hands down, totally murdered this track, and um, I would say the biggest reason to listen to it. I mean, the Peggy feature is amazing. Uh, it's absolutely brutal. So, you know, give it a shot. Give it a try, if not only for that. Uh, there are elements of the song I wish were better and more interesting, but uh, the Peggy feature alone is fantastic. Uh, we also have this new track over here from Mr. Homeboy Sandman, a rap artist who I'm, I'm not usually a gigantic fan of. Far Out is the name of the song. Uh, usually his delivery is a bit too subdued for me, but I thought that his lyrics and his uh, relentless flow on this track were uh, uh, more impressive than usual, so give it a shot, give it a try. Uh, be anticipating his new full-length album if, if in fact, uh, you are a fan of his sound and style. He reminds me quite a bit of, uh, I, I guess, other rappers that have a very subdued delivery, a rock Marciano, but he's, uh, you know, not like some cold-blooded New York rapper or anything like that. That's not his style. It's not his, uh, that's not his aesthetic. All right, moving on from there, we have a new song from Grimes and I.O. Violence is the name of this new one, and it's a... Uh, Kind of shimmery, spacey, dance pop anthem. I, I wish the hook went harder. I wish the beat went harder. I wish uh, the production was a bit more colorful and creative. To me, it sounds like um, somewhat watered down Crystal Castles, but nowhere near as bad as Crystal Castles is now that Alice Glass is gone. Uh, it just reminds me of, of just some okay Crystal Castle, some OK Crystal Castle. It's not, it's not terrible. It's not bad. And I'm still definitely looking forward to this new Grimes album. Um, but this one wasn't hitting quite as much. You know, it's OK. Maybe it'll grow on me more in the context of the record, but it's OK. <clears throat> this uh, new track over here from Francis and the Lights, Take Me to the Light, Bon Iver and Kanye West on this track. It's not bad. It's pretty good. Instrumental's decent. Uh, Justin Vernon and Kanye West on the song add quite a bit of character. Uh, the, the lead vocals mostly sound like something out of a Peter Gabriel song, though. It just pretty much sounds like uh, Bon Iver and Kanye West guesting on a Peter Gabriel song, uh, oddly enough. Um, so if, if you're down with some Peter Gabriel, and, and there's some good Peter Gabriel out there, don't get me wrong. If, if you're down with some Peter Gabriel, um, give this one a shot. I've, I've listened to Francis and the Lights before. This is really, an, an honestly, the first track of his that has struck me as having such an overtly, like, clear as a goddamn bell, Peter Gabriel influence, but but here it is, but here it is. And we also have Danny Brown, brand new song, Dirty Laundry, gave it a full length review over on the Fantano channel. It's not bad, instrumental's great, the lyrics and the lyrical concept throughout the song are pretty cool with Dirty Laundry and past experiences, so on and so forth. I just wish the flow was better, wish there was more song structure to the whole thing, but uh, still, at this point I would say I'm, I'm incredibly excited to Listen to this new Danny Brown record. You know what I'm saying very soon. All right, best tracks. The ones that left the biggest impression on me this week, the ones I enjoyed the most. Uh, the new Comet is coming. It's a new extra track. The Jazz Fusion Group is back 
with a song that's kind of an extension off their last full-length record, which is one of my favorite albums of the year, mind you. Uh, this one over here that you should be checking out is Life Force Part 2. It goes. If you like your jazz sounding futuristic and a little funky, give it a shot, give it a try, give it a listen. Uh, we also have Swans, Leaving Meaning, new album, On The Way. It's Coming, It's Real is the name of the new track, and it is a pretty, I guess, brooding tune showing the band going back to a style that they haven't uh, toyed with for quite a while now, uh, not since, um, I, th I think it was the 90s that they were uh, putting out records in more of that uh, acoustic gothic country style. And then, of course, also you have uh, a lot of that Michael Gira solo stuff after Swans uh, pretty much fell apart with Angels of Light and so on and so forth in that era of his career. So gothic country is, is nothing new to Swans, nothing new to Michael Gira. Uh, it's just interesting to hear them go back to that sound in this era of the band's career where it seems like they were on something new, they were uh, kind of taking off from where they left off and getting more gargantuan. Uh, not to say that that's not going to happen on this new record and not to say that this new song isn't linear and hypnotic in its own way. It certainly is. But uh, more acoustics, more balladry, more vocal harmonies, uh, more space. And again, that country twang, it's coming back. And that gothic twist, it's a pretty good track. I liked it a lot. So excited to hear the band... Uh, um, head back into that sound and, and, you know, looking forward to seeing what they're going to bring up uh, going forward. All right, we also have um, a track that hit me off of a suggestion from some of the fans off of social media. Uh, Mr. Roy Blair, whose stuff previously has been pretty underwhelming to me, but this new track of his over here, I don't know about him, is a really sweet combination of some light dance pop, some R&B, a little bit of pop rap, and it's all seamlessly mixed to the point where it's it's difficult to tell where one um, influence or genre ends and one begins, but the vocals are solid, the tune is good. I liked it quite a bit. Shout out to Roy Blair. Definitely going to be looking uh, out for more tracks from him given how sharp as hell this new uh, single was. And we also have uh, one of my favorite tracks this week. Love, 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 love this shit out of this track. Lunch Money Lewis, who is a rapper I've heard of here and there, he has this new single out, Make That Cake featuring Doja Cat. Ridiculous hook, ridiculous music video, Doja's, um, or Doja's guest verse on this track is amazing, hilarious, lots of attitude, lots of personality. It's very funny, it's very playful. Uh, this track should be one of the biggest songs of the year. It's just too ridiculous not to be celebrated on every corner of the internet. And, and that's all I have to say. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. If you try one goddamn track out of all these tracks I'm suggesting to you, make it this one. It's It'll put a smile on your face. I guarantee you. It'll put a smile on your face. It's silly. It's silly. All right. Liking this uh, also, new track over here, Fat Joe, Cardi B, and Well AA. You know, Fat Joe comes out every once in a while with a total banger. You know, I mean, he, he, he is the lean back guy, you know? Some, some of y'all are probably too young to remember that shit, um, but I do. And, um, you know, I, I would say on this track over here, he's really trying to come back in that way. We have to write a club anthem over here. And I'm, I'm not so much sure if um, this is going to play all that well with the, 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 the Zoomers. I'm not sure if this is going to play all that well on the Internet. It may not. But as somebody who remembers like flat, uh, excuse me, Fat Joe <laughs> bringing some of these great club jams during the bling era in the 2000s. Um, and obviously his his career in hip hop trends even further back than that. But what I'm saying is uh, this new song seems to pretty much be in that vein. And I think it's really good. It's got a very odd instrumental. Uh, Joe's verse is fun. Cardi B's verse is fun. And well, at the end is fine. I mean, given I don't speak Spanish, I really couldn't get a whole lot out of what he was saying. But still, I think um, given the current landscape of uh, contemporary music, I think having an artist like, uh, like him on this track is absolutely essential. And uh, yeah, liked it a lot. Hit hard. Fun song. Uh, we also have Earth Gang, Mirror Land, new record, a track from it I would love for you guys to try top down. Uh, I'm not going to say a lot about it because I do plan on reviewing this album pretty soon. But this track sounds like if um, Chance the Rapper's Hot Shower were good. I'll say that. I'll leave it at that. Uh, we also have Chelsea Wolfe with what, in my opinion, is the best teaser from her new full-length album so far. 
Uh, this new song of hers is not only a show of her love and devotion to music, but out of all these teaser cuts so far, it has some of the grandest instrumentation um, that is that has been getting, uh, again, teased and is pretty epic, pretty powerful, pretty immense. Uh, Deranged for Rock and Roll is the name of this new track, and I love it. Uh, we also have another track from Charlie XCX. Charlie, stop. You're, you're, you're ruining the whole album. You're letting everybody hear the entire record before it's even out. And, and I, know, I know most of the songs are really, really good. They are. They really, truly are. But goddamn, Charlie. We're hearing the whole record, Charlie. I'm sure that's your intention. But still, Charlie, still. Leave something up to the imagination. Leave something. Please, Charlie. Please. Please. Um, <laughs> this new one over here featuring Clario. And we also have uh, Yiji. Who I, I hope I'm saying that name correctly. I believe I am. Who had, who had a, an EP release lately that a lot of people were making a big deal of. Didn't get a lot out of it myself, but I thought that both of their contributions to this new single over here were great. Instrumental is wild and off the wall. Charlie brings a great hook too. And I don't know, man. She's just consistently on this wave where she is just sounding like the future of pop music, you know, or at least presenting a futuristic view of what pop music could be. You know, and um, uh, I, I just commend her for that. I commend her for continuing to go down that road. You know, she's been on that style for a while, you know, and there have been moments where I've celebrated. There have been moments where I've been a little underwhelmed and I felt like this could, you know, turn into something more interesting down the road. And it seems like that is finally coming to fruition. We're seeing the full potential here uh, with this new crop of singles, potentially with this new album. I'm loving it so far. So, all right. And we also have... Uh, a handful of tracks that I want to point out to you guys. They're remixes. So basically, here, here it is. F Fever Ray and the Knife, because obviously they share membership. Fever Ray and the Knife chose a Bjork song to remix, and they each remixed that song in their own way. And then we have Bjork, who picked a Fever Ray song to remix, and then she remixed that song. So we have kind of like a trade of we're remixing each other's songs. And it's, it's a bit of a mix. I think the Knife... Uh, remix came out the funkiest. I think the Fever Ray rem remix came out the drabbest, and the, and the Bjork remix came out the most insane. Uh, but generally, it, across all of them, I thought they were pretty great. So um, give it a try. Give them all a try. They're absolutely nuts. Uh, it's really cool that they, uh, you know, extended a bit of an olive branch and said, hey, let's go, let's do this. It's, it'll be a neat little uh, crisscross, and absolutely it was, as somebody who is a fan of both artists, so, uh, you know, if, if you like yourself some Bjork, if you like yourself some strange, freaky, Scandinavian electronic pop music, and sometimes not so pop music, <laughs> give it a try. It's, it's pretty good. And that has been the Weekly Track Roundup, everyone. That has been the Weekly Track Roundup. Again, everything I've talked about is linked down below so you can try it yourself. Also, good people over at The Ridge who continue to support this segment. Get one of those bad boys. If you feel like a, a minimalist wallet would, would improve your life, I know it has mine. Oh, yeah. Life's gotten so much better since minimalist wallets, bro. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. You're the best, you're the best, you're the best. Anthony Fantano, Weekly, weekly Track Roundup, forever. <laughs>